You're listening to DraftKings Network. Host the ultimate backyard barbecue with Whole Foods Market. It's the Hot Grill Summer event through July 16th with sizzling sales on no antibiotics ever boneless beef ribeye steak and beef New York strip steak. Plus, check out sales on sustainable wild-caught Alaska sockeye salmon, organic strawberries, and more. In a hurry? Choose grab-and-go favorites like picnic salads and sushi, plus plenty of cooler-friendly beverages. Make it a hot grill summer at Whole Foods Market. Now's a good time to remember where the story of tequila started. In 1795, the first tequila distillery was opened by the Cuervo family. And 229 years later, Cuervo is still going strong. Family-owned from the start, same family, same land. Now's a good time to enjoy Cuervo, the tequila that invented tequila. Go to Cuervo.com to shop tequila or visit a store near you. Cuervo, now's a good time. Trademarks owned by Beckley. SAB, the CV. Copyright 2024. Proximo. Jersey City, New Jersey. Please drink responsibly. Welcome to the Big Sui, presented by DraftKings. Why are you listening to this show? The podcast that seems very similar to the other Dan Levitard podcast. I'm sorry, I'm not going to apologize for that. <laughs> in fact, the only difference seems to be this imaging. I have been tempted in restaurants just walking past tables to grab somebody's fries that if they're just there. That hasn't happened to you guys? I've done it. And now, here's the marching man to nowhere, fat face, and the habitual liar. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. What happens to guns? I don't know. Monday happened. It's early. It Z- is. Yeah. Zeros look like ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Joe Mazzula was in Kyrie Irving's draft class. Come on. <laughs> he was also in Kemba Walker's, Isaiah Thomas's, what? Uh, Jimmy Butler's, Kawhi's, uh, Clay. Huh. The coach of the Boston Celtics uh, is very young. The uh, Boston Celtics now trail the Mavericks in point differential for this series, a series in which they're leading 3-1. Uh, Tom Habershow had the tweet that we're going to see something that we've never seen before, no matter who lifts the trophy, because no team has ever come back from a 3-0 deficit in the NBA Finals, and no team's ever won the championship, having lost a game in the series by 38 or more. <laughs> i got to tell you, Dan, the fact that I saw that Luka can move can hustle, can play defense, only makes games one through three more inex- uh, inexcusable. Are you kidding me? He was so bad. Games one, two, and three, he was good in game four, but he can move. He can run. He can sprint. He can play defense. It's not great defense, but at least it's not Matador defense. It was defense. He was trying. He was giving effort. What happened in game one, two, and three? Someone explain it to me because that is the worst display from a great player in the history of the NBA Finals. Oh, come on. Oh, Dave, seriously. Come on. He didn't play defense. Uh, It was five on four for three games. He's never been good at defense, and the last thing you saw tends to be the most in the history of the league as if you forget. Saw him hustle. You forgot LeBron James losing to Dirk? Like, you forgot that? He he did respond in kind to, I thought, if you could ever find valid criticism for a player such as Luca, who we all understand. He's tired. Yeah, he doesn't have the greatest conditioning. He's asked to do everything. He's got Tim Hardaway Jr. as his third leading scorer on his team. Tim Hardaway Jr. <laughs> went an entire month without hitting a shot from the field. I think we all understand that. But also, he was so bad 
game three. That was so embarrassing. Like he was such a so baby yes. about it. He was cursing at his sideline for not challenging stuff. He turned 50 50 balls into 70 30 balls with his lack of conditioning. He was just so, so bad that the great ones usually respond to performances like that. And yeah, it's not Bruce Bowen type defense, but for him, that's all they need. All right. Let's, uh, let's examine though for a second, what happened uh, after or toward the end of game three, because the Boston Celtics <laughs> Celtics were dying to choke away that game, mm -hmm. like fadeaway jumper after fadeaway jumper, giving up a 20-point lead, and then Luca. when you're telling him, hey, Luca, play defense, he decides, I'm going to play it out here on Jalen Brown to get my sixth foul out here, challenge it, and then, of course, they lose the game because Boston was dying to lose that basketball game in a way that made uh, everybody rise up and confirm all the doubts that they have about that. Really? Not all the doubts. The only doubt yes. that exists about that basketball team is toward the end of games. And it was on display when Luka did the whining thing that made Brian Windhorst go after him on air in a way I don't think Brian Windhorst has ever done to a player because, yes, you expect more from him, and he was bad in those three games. Bad for him. And defensively, we gave the stat last week. That's true, that no one has been blown by as much as Luka has been because he's never been any good at defense. He's not any good at defense, and we're always wondering whether or not he's in shape or not. But he's capable of doing what he did in Game 4 at any given point. We'll do it every game then. If you could do it in but, game four, do it in games one through three. But, but Scott, I mean, the, the Celtics present a, a, a series of problems like, okay, Tatum, do it every game. They're, they're playing at the, at the top of the sport. They're playing the very best. They're playing against each other. And sometimes they're going to neutralize each other. But they're going to make each other look like that. I understand that. With Tatum, though, I'm never, or anyone else in that series, I'm not questioning effort. Mike and I are questioning the effort of Luca, especially on the defensive end. Like I, I understand why he's tired because they're targeting him, but when you're when you're that fatigued, you make bad decisions, such as trying to draw a charge out on the perimeter in a way that even Luca won't get that call. And he's had a very friendly whistle. All they need is for what he did in game four which was just be a little bit more aggressive because you're only making yourself – it's a cycle. You're only making yourself more tired by having to expend that much more energy trying to climb out of these holes. Help yourself on the offensive end by putting in a respectable effort on the defensive end. But, he was he, he deserved the criticism as much as any star who's ever that re so almost solely responsible for his team's success. He put his team in really bad spots, and he just kept compounding it, and then he started getting petulant. It's always impressive when you're not the biggest baby on the court that also features Jason Tatum. I'm not objecting to the appraisal that he hasn't played well. I'm objecting to Stugatz's. That's the worst thing that I've ever seen in the history of the finals. <laughs> well, it took him four games to suddenly wake up and decide, hey, I have to play defense. I mean, he's also carrying an injury, which for a limited defender, that that doesn't help matters. He's got to get more help also defensively from his teammates, but. It's like it, you had very curious game fours in both sports where you see a path where these teams, look, they look just so overwhelming and you've wondered where has this been all series. And with all the, the time in between games, you can talk yourself into both teams blowing a 3-0 lead. Put it on the poll, please, Juju. Did you know Missoula uh, was in the same draft class as Kyrie Irving? And when I mentioned to Stugatz that this can happen to great players um, – Luca's performance allows us to not look anymore at Kyrie's performance in the first two games. I have found hugely interesting what Kyrie is saying publicly. I have not seen a lot of athletes do this when the piranha are feeding, when you're 0-13, he had been against the Celtics since stepping on the leprechaun and he was talking about the self-doubt involved in going into Boston and not fitting in in what he's calling a cult and he's taking his responsibility for that Stugatz in a way that is uh, refreshing and to me surprising let's listen to Kyrie Irving here before he heads back into Boston because I was telling you Stugatz that when uh, the history is written right in front of us on who these people are 
are. Kyrie Irving has an opportunity tonight to do something really special and memorable by simply being the Kyrie Irving that he can often be. Luca gets the criticism because of everything that happened at game th- in Game 3 where he spends a lot of time complaining about the refs, but I also understand anybody who complains about the refs because, to God, these guys are getting fouled all the time. Like, I, I know. Windhorst explained why he was so adamant afterwards and so emotional afterwards, and he talked about He explained it actually this morning. Uh, I was listening on the way in where he said, going back now seven or eight years, the people surrounding Luca have begged him to stop with the complaining and the officials. Just stop. focus your energy on the stuff that you can control. Stop focusing any negative energy on the referees. It's it's so much easier said than done, Stu. I, I know. About, but I was thinking about this with Doc Rivers the other day. Like, Doc Rivers, this is funny, okay, because Doc Rivers went on Simmons' podcast and now says Damian Lillard was out of shape and that he was going through a divorce and he didn't want to get hurt when he knew he was going to get traded. And so he's putting out there all the things that Doc Rivers does when he doesn't want to be accountable for the fact that they were terrible at the end of the season when he got there. People are making fun of the fact that Doc Rivers has also said that Philly fans are to blame uh, for why it is that they didn't win in Philadelphia (laughs) when the year before Doc got there, they were 31-4 and at home (laughs) in Philadelphia. Uh, But I got to thinking about this. If you're Doc Rivers, is it anyone's human nature to actually be accountable when things go wrong on nope. you? Nope. When things go wrong on you, if you're foul, if you don't make the shot, do you think any of us would just not be talking about the referees if we thought we were getting fouled? Like, if we thought the reason we weren't succeeding is because the refs were doing that to us, it's very easy for everyone to say, hey, care a whole lot, but right up until you object to somebody else preventing you from doing your job, that's where you should ignore them and be accountable. It's good advice from Windhorse, but I but I don't think it's practical. Like, mm. I don't think that that's the way human beings behave. But it was also a pretty rare example where it was pretty obvious to everyone and the only people offering a rebuttal are, are diehard Mavericks fans. That was name more levels of flopping around and it was just an unprofessional look he looked like a child there and I think Brian Windhorst was right to call into account like a lot of these things and this is the elephant in the room a lot of these things are a byproduct of your general approach to the game so if you're not going to be a professional about your conditioning if you're not going to be that professional even though you're limited defensively in part because of your conditioning then be a professional on the court and don't compound the issues by causing your team technicals by getting yourself out of the game because you think you're owed a makeup by by just being how you were on the court because it made a bad situation worse despite the call whether you agree with it or not and that is not the time to try to go out 30 feet from the basket and make a Agreed. play defensively he needs to stay in the game I- I, I want to be clear on this. I am not defending Luca's childishness. I just understand why at 25, Luca would still be a child. I'm saying you got to grow out of it. You have to. You have to be more professional okay. than that. And I'm also saying it's easier said than done. Luca, all your life, you have been on a platter going. And I don't know what his life was like before this, but. He got out of whatever it is that he was in because 10 years everyone have been serving that child. Serving that child everything he wants everywhere because he's a savior and he gets everything in the world he wants even though he's drinking beers and 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 looking like he's got a pot belly and still dominating, still getting stardom, still getting every reward and just took out everybody in the West. <laughs> behaving that way. Not changing his behavior any. I get why he's childish and I also get why it has to change but that's why we say teams have to suffer that it this is that is a blanket statement and now we're getting in the minutia of what it means to suffer and for Luca, it means not just losing a title it, it means not just losing any chance at a series because you're performing like that because you realize that you can only go so far with your general approach to the game right now and that needs to change it's things like being called out by guys like Brian Windhorst who don't do that like that's where the suffering the pain comes you learn from it and you realize i'm not going to stand for that anymore folks the dan lepitard show is sponsored by better help 
Look, this year has gone by very quickly. Reaching the halfway point of the year is an excellent time to reflect on your mental health journey, assess your progress, make plans for the future. Ask yourself, what's something you're proud of so far in 2024? What's something you still want to accomplish this year? When life goes fast, it's important to take a moment to celebrate your wins and adjust what currently doesn't work for the rest of the year. Therapy can help you take stock of your progress and set achievable goals for the next six months. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time, no additional charge. Reflecting on the first half of the year and planning for the next can help you stay proactive about your mental health. Take a moment. Visit BetterHelp.com slash DLB today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. Dot com slash DLB. Don Lebertard. Yeah, enjoy enjoy a long and fruitful run, Dan. <laughs> what was that voice? A Celtics fan. That was a Celtics fan? Well, it was me. Stugats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, am- it's amazing. It's amazing to see the mask pulled off and to see you so clearly. What, you, were, you, you were in such good disguise and I didn't know it was you. But then- it's to me, a Celtics fan. <laughs> this is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats. It seems fairly obvious at this point, Stugatz, that we are going to overcover the holy hell out of every flagrant foul on Caitlin Clark. <laughs> but I ask this question sincerely. When is that going to stop? When, like, obviously it's not going to stop yesterday, but when is it going to stop that, uh, that the way that we uh, enter these conversations uh, about games that are being played here are has the famous player been hit in the head too hard by somebody uh while driving to the basket like is that going to stop anytime soon i have no idea i don't know if we're equipped to discuss this the way we probably should discuss this so we keep falling back on the same exact thing and the same exact topic now angel reese lent some of you know lent some to the conversation but she was asked about it after the game And she said she was making a basketball play, and she said there must be a special whistle. I love the idea of a special whistle. I do. I got to be honest with you. I think her point about the whistle was that she was fouled a few times and they didn't call it. Right. I don't think, like, I. I don't think that had anything to do with the, the attempt to block. He just wanted Clark. to talk about the special. That would be so idea of a special, special whistle. I'm yeah. with him on that. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. it sound like? Yeah. Yeah. Just, I stopped in mid-take, and I just like, oh, a special whistle. Does it sound different? Does it look yeah. different? I don't, I'm, imagining, I'm imagining like when Jordan played, there was a whistle for everyone else and a whistle for Jordan. Because if you did anything to anyone else, it wasn't a foul. But if you did it to Jordan, then the Jordan whistle would come out, and that's a special whistle. I just like the idea of a special whistle. Let's build it out. It really is all you had here is to say, we don't know how to talk about this. And therefore, I'm just going to misunderstand something that Angel Reese said and just talk about this idea that I have for a special whistle. Let's play the Angel (laughs) Reese sound here real quick for the people. For inside, I mean, I think we were playing really hard. Um, I think we went up really strong a lot of times and we didn't get a lot of calls. And going back and looking at the film, I've seen a lot of calls that weren't made. I guess some people got a special whistle. We're not going to be able to get this out of sports, uh, the complaining about the refereeing, right? Like, it's just not something that ever I, – I just I, – having done this for as long as we've done this, I, I know it's as, it's, it's as old as time in sports to complain about the umpiring or the officiating – Uh, And I will acknowledge that in many places it's terrible, so I understand why we spend so much time complaining about it. But I also find it just unendingly empty. Like, you understand so much of what's happening in sports is decided by all sorts of randomnesses, all sorts of tiny little small things, mistakes made by an assortment of human beings. Mm -hmm. And the amount of time that we spend complaining about officials is crazy to me, but yet I understand why players invested in competing, not just competing for winning, but competing for money would at every turn see something that diminishes their performance and say, well, it's not the mirror. It's not me. It's not because I've failed to do something. It's because of an an assortment of extenuating circumstances that involve the officiating. I just don't know how that sounds to the ear if you're someone who likes 
um, programming, just sports programming, to perpetually hear everybody talking about the judges, the rulers. I think on the one hand, if I were a player and I were really frustrated about the inconsistent officiating in the WNBA, I would say something about it in my press conference too. And on the other hand, it doesn't seem like it's going to change anytime soon. There was also a really uh, controversial call in the Skies game on Friday against the Mystics where a player got a technical for, I think she said, ball don't lie or something to the ref. And he was like, you're, you're out of here. So like, it's just bad a lot of the time. And I don't think she's wrong, but yeah, I, I get it. Like it, there's nothing fans can do about it and the, the officiating just isn't going to get but, better but of out cor- of nowhere of cor- but of course it's bad a lot of the time I've said this before about pro sports Dugats that the athleticism is such that the people who are even at the high end of officiating that they're failing all the time because there are a million things that can be called anywhere so of course if you drop down Levels to college football, to high school football, to uh, uh, to women's basketball that's growing, but you have your top end officials elsewhere, and they're failing all the time too. And now you go into the other sports, there aren't enough people who are good at this or exceptional at it for it to be consistent anywhere in sports. But of course, it's going to be worse in the places that haven't yet caught up to where the money, the attention is, where the coverage is that eradicates some of this. Because we shame Angel Hernandez after 30 years out of the sport, because too many things are being decided by, it, by incompetence. No, but I'm, but I'm, I. If it's something that can't be done well by anybody at the highest levels, if it's something that has error at the highest levels, then of course it's going to have errors everywhere else, where you're not paying them the way that you pay the people who are at the highest levels. If you don't want us to talk about it anymore, the refs should stop cheating. Yeah. Well, how about this? You guys, point. yeah, but you saw, you guys saw quietly this weekend an ump was disciplined for gambling. Yeah, well, no, we don't know if it was the sport or if that matters at all. But it was it wasn't baseball. But yeah, like I well, said, no, we know we know it wasn't baseball okay. because he was disciplined and not gone. All right, well, like, they should stop cheating. Yeah, and I'll stop complaining about the refs. How about how about the refs stop cheating? I'll stop complaining. He right. also, I think, is like historically or like presently like the second most accurate umpire. It's just a weird story. Yeah, we lost a good one. How about the players stop complaining about the officials? Well, like, like it's, you it's, would too. Like well, you I, would too. Especially know, but, when they cheat. But Luca spends the entire game complaining about the officials. Angel Reese in the post game, she's complaining about the officials. She was four of eleven, I believe, last night. Caitlin Clark also complains. Like every player, yeah. every player that plays the game complains about the officials, and a lot of the time they have a point. The That's big- all. You shouldn't harass the referees or the umpires if you're a fan. However, if you're a player, I get why yeah, because you're they're complaining cheating. a lot. Right. I mean, Angel Reese was 4 of 13. Worry about that. Worry about she your had a jumper. Double t- she's playing really well, Stugatz. 4 of 13. You haven't watched her I'll play tell you who's a playing single well. game. I, you, you are wrong. She's I will tell breaking you, records for double-doubles as a rookie. I don't care. Percentage, terrible. I will tell you. Yeah, I will of, tell you who's playing great. Hold on. I have watched it. Different. Caitlin Clark and the Fever are starting to play great. They've won three or four, I believe. Caitlin nearly had a triple double yesterday. Her shooting percentage is exceptional. She's playing. She's field playing goal percentage great. for bigs is in that sport is, are different than like the men's version. Uh, four or thirteen. She, You're going to complain about the officiating Angel afterwards. Is playing really well. She's well, probably going to be the rookie of the month in the mm. WNBA. Yeah, but okay, will. and Caitlin Clark is also playing well. Sure, I'll get yeah. <laughs> rookie she's of the month. Also playing well, but yep. I will like Rom. the Fever are also playing worse teams at this point in their schedule than they did when they started the season. We were like, oh my god, they're so bad. You so like, yeah, it kind of this is how it works. You understand how it's easier for someone that's seven foot three. I do. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Can I go back to this umpire for a second? Work we always we've talked about how in sports, we've talked about how in sports the punishment is determined by how good you are. If you're really good, you could punch Pat Riley in the face and still start. If you're bad and you do something, you're gone. Billy unless, men- unless you're Angel Hernandez. You Billy mentioned this years. umpire being the most accurate. He is known as the best ball strike umpire in MLB. In Game 2 of the 2022 World Series, he called all 129 balls and strikes correctly. Yeah, I learned recently that there was a perfect game in the World Series because of this story. What? Yeah. There was a perfect game in the World Series in 2022. Yeah. This guy's so good, he should be allowed to gamble. What? Huh. Not on baseball. 
but I'm okay with him gambling on other sports. It He's ha- that good. It has. It's Pat Holberg is his name, and uh, he. It has to be a gambling incident. If he's been disciplined and is still in the sport, and it's just discipline, it has to be a minor infraction. Correct. It has to be like he walked into a casino or something. Who right? threw it in 2022? Was it a team effort? I gotta see. I don't know if that's when the it perfect game be. was. I, if he you would have told all, me he when I was a kid right. that there would have been a perfect game in the World Series, and I would be learning about it two years later, and no one would have a I, name Mike, for me. I don't think there was a perfect game in the World Series. I think he umpired a perfect it's game his perfect in the game. World he Series. Got all I think you read that wrong. Yeah. Uh, I think he there has not been a perfect game. That in would the World be a big Series. deal. With Don <laughs> Larson, a, we, we would have known. There was a combined no hitter in the 2022 World Series. That was the Astros. This is game two that he threw his he called his perfect game where he got every all 129 balls and strike calls correct. Whoa, so they have perfect games for umps too? Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. that's forward. confusing. Uh-huh. That's no why one, I'm and that's why I'm saying he should be allowed to gamble. But no he's one that celebrates good. umpire perfect games except my sure. <laughs> like he's the only one. We should we should celebrate them. Yeah. Who's keeping track of these things? I don't know. There, are, there are there are umpiring databases that are keeping track of how well or how poorly these guys are doing. We always complain when the refs get it wrong. We never admit exactly. when they got it right. And they yeah. did get the call right on Great the block point. shot yesterday. And that's all there is to it. Sometimes yeah. you miss the ball and you hit a player yep. and then you get called for a foul and then that's the end of the story. Yep. And that's really the end of the story. Now, was yesterday a terrible day for me because the sky lost and then I watched Madam Web? Yes, it was. Oh. And that was my father's day. Watch hmm that terrible movie that I missed a major plot point of, found out this morning when I was listening to how the How Did This Get Made live show recap of it. Wow. This movie was really bad. And it was so bad that like I expected it to be like, oh, it's funny. It's so bad that it's funny. No, it no. was boring and bad. Yeah, they remind you of what era it's in constantly with like, did you catch Idol last night? And it wasn't the Idol, <laughs> which... I mean, come on. Apparently, they just started tracking the umpires like this in 2020. So since 2020, it's the only perfect game. Okay, we can't be calling this a perfect game. We can be. No, and, no, and, it's so confusing. What do you mean? No, I'll, uh, go, no, I'll go the other way on so this. So confused you thought if, it was a pitcher. If we're going to spend this much time complaining about the referees. It was, should... it was a little striking that no one knew for sure if there was a perfect game no. done by a pitcher in 2022. Um, I did know for sure. It just took me a minute to register whether or not that uh, combined bullpen uh, no-hitter was a perfect game or not. I couldn't remember, and I'm thinking to myself, is that something that could have happened without anyone noticing <laughs> anyone on our show or anyone listening to this that's not something that could have happened is it but i i do think we need to celebrate more the fact that the fact that pat holberg had a perfect game and we're only learning about it when he's being disciplined for gambling seems really unfair to officials if we're going to spend all our time complaining and bitching about when they get everything wrong the idea that someone could be quietly perfect in sports and no one would notice or care seems unfair if we're only going to celebrate this man when he gets in trouble for gambling <laughs> and then i found out that Adam Scott, his name was Ben in the movie. What? And there's a baby born at the end of the movie. And I think you're supposed to be like, oh, he's Uncle Ben. Yeah, the he's baby Uncle ben. is Spider Man. That's why it was in really? 2003. Yeah. But how was I supposed to know that from watching the movie? I mean, it was completely out of the blue, out of nowhere. There's two spider, secret spider power people in the same friend group? Weird. In 2003? That doesn't make any sense. Shitty Sunday. Terrible Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> and then, the, and then you got to watch the coverage of uh, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. I, mean, which, I muted all wow, of those people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was his first World Series game too, when he got Incredible. the perfect game. Imagine what? that. You work your whole life. What? You finally get to a World Series game and you call a perfect game. The first one in recorded history. <sighs> Will Since it be his last? Now Since 2020. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. The first one in recorded history because we weren't recording this stuff with technology uh, before 2020. Host the ultimate backyard barbecue with Whole Foods Market. It's the hot grill summer event through July 16th with sizzling sales on no antibiotics ever boneless beef ribeye steak and beef New York strip steak. Plus, check out sales on sustainable wild-caught Alaska sockeye salmon, organic strawberries, and more. In a hurry? Choose grab-and-go favorites like picnic salads and sushi, plus plenty of cooler-friendly beverages. Make it a hot girl summer at Whole Foods Market. Don Lebatard. Punctuate this segment with what is your strike three call. Well, strike one would be 
strike! And then you stand up and you give a good point to the right. Stugats. That's the same for strike two. Okay. But strike three, you get down low. You got your hands behind the catcher. All right? The right arm goes up into the air. Yeah! And then you finish it with the punch. Oh the right arm flings way up into the air. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> I wish I could see that. <laughs> it's their audio is great. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats. I did want to get back to and circle back around on this Kyrie Irving sound, Stugats, that I wanted to play for you because... I do think it's unusual. It will buy him nothing tonight. Boston hates him, and when Boston hates, you don't really want to be on the end of Boston hating. It's a cruel and unpleasant thing uh, for anybody to be on the end of, but a black athlete being on the wrong end of Boston's hate is particularly unpleasant. But uh, whatever Kyrie Irving's scars are here, Stugatz, I do think that the, the stomping of the leprechaun, the going 0-13 against the Celtics since then, Kyrie Irving returning to Boston, I don't know that there's a more unpleasant feeling that anyone tonight would be overcoming than him. I don't know if there's anyone who's playing for either of the teams tonight – who's talking publicly about self-doubt and how bad he was when they played in Boston because that that is just general human discomfort. And I know we think of these guys as superhuman, but him going back to a place that he tried to physically sage Stugatz because his the way that he feels emotionally about everything that was there is poison to him, and he refers to not fitting in in a cult. Let's listen to Kyrie Irving. They, they have championship pedigree here. They've shown it for years. They're uh, one of the most winnings in franchise in all of sports. So you have to show your respects here, and I think that's what I struggled with initially was figuring out how I'm going to be a great player here while winning championships, while also leading a team and uh, selflessly joining uh, the Celtics organization or the cult that they have here, um, you know, and that's what they expect you to do as as a player. They expect you to seamlessly buy into the Celtics pride, buy into everything Celtics, and if you don't, then you'll be outed. And uh, I'm one of the people that's on the outs. <laughs> that sounds humbled to me, and it will buy him nothing. Nothing. Uh, it will buy him uh, poorer treatment from the Celtic fans because he called them a cult. I don't think it's going to be any poorer than it's been. I think they're I might at thank maximum. Him for being humble. I think they're maximum. They're not going to thank him for anything. Thank you for being humble in your last press conference. <laughs> there is thank, no. There is one dude, like two fans in Celtics pride garb, yep. saying, "Hey, wait a second. Yeah. You made a pretty nuanced point <laughs> that showed his own personal growth." Maybe we shouldn't say that about his family. Let's grow too. Let's grow. No, like to no, like, I, telling I, the let's crowd. Keep we thinking. It. Keep yeah, working it, it out. Keep seeing if you can find a chant that uh, helps uh, two fans in Boston <laughs> celebrate uh, Kyrie Irving's maturity. Where's that ticket at? Any update on that situation? Uh, I've only gotten one tweet, so the, um, my inboxes are open. People, reach out to me. Well, what was the number? Nineteen hundred is the highest offer. So it's wow. off from the three thousand your wife yeah. wants. That's what she's asking for. Hmm. Hmm. Do you believe if your wife gets a $3,000 offer for Game 5 of the Stanley Cup tomorrow here in Sunrise, do you believe if that offer comes through that you will be going to the game with a fan instead of your wife? Like, I, I think we can get that offer if we promise it. I don't believe that we will get that offer if it's not being promised. Well, hold on. Have you run the $1,900 offer by her yet? Ooh, someone just responded to that with a $1,902 and a gummy. Wow. wow. Run that by her. Well, who gets the gummy? Hold on a second. I see Are you, you got my text. Gummy or is she? <laughs> a single gummy? Like what kind of... Yeah, but this is a good stuff. <laughs> this feels Vegan, Mahalo. too. No, they, Not no. made from horse bones. <laughs> this feels like uh, one of these eBay fake offers. Of, it doesn't feel like somebody, like as soon as you uh, verify this offer, you will find out there's no gummy and no $1,900. Maybe the $2, but that's it. This is like when you're on a flight and they're asking for volunteers and you have to wait until the last minute to take the offer because the the win-win is really high for you like 
but either way, you're either going to the game with your wife or you're not, and you have three thousand yeah. dollars in a gummy. Yeah. So you have to wait until puck drops tomorrow night to make a call on this. Flash deals. That's what that sounds like. Just amongst friends, which would you rather go to the game with your wife or nineteen hundred dollars in a gummy with a stranger? Hmm. Just amongst friends. But you're splitting the $1,900 with her at least. And you're hoping that this but not the stranger's well-intentioned and this isn't the last we see of you. <laughs> I would also pay $1,900 to not sit with a stranger. <laughs> Chris Cody my is wife can... soothing himself right now, soothing his arm. He's like, his body language is all soothing. If my wife can come up with a gummy, she can go. <laughs> Wow, at this Where point, is she Chris, find one hold of on those. a second. At this point, you should start a bidding war between a stranger and your wife for the ticket, Just right? Just go to your bedside table. I mean. I've got a second hiding spot. The gummy is the deal? Uh, is the tiebreaker? The gummy? I could have used a gummy when I watched Madam Web yesterday. Uh, I, think it I tried. It doesn't help. Really? Oh. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't help. Stugatz, I wanted to ask you something that some people were questioning me about that I had not considered from last week. Over the weekend, I got an assortment of people reaching out to me, mm -hmm. asking me if I would have made a decision that I made last week if I had known some things that became known after last week, which is, would we have taken Dan Hurley if we had known that that was going to be such an orchestrated media tour that was wildly unusual under the circumstances for a coach just going back to his own job? Uh, would Dan Hurley came on with us first, and I was told that it was just two stops. It was us and Colin Cowherd. Right. That's what I was told. And mm -hmm. then... He did a full-on blitz of, I'm just going back to UConn. Like, it was all over the place. And uh, what people were asking me is, do you realize you were used? Because I had not realized that we were among those used. I thought that we were getting some sort of special access to Dan Hurley when Dan Hurley was doing an orchestrated campaign. And the reason I bring this up is at least in part because of the ties to, to Woj and the ties to how uh, parts of that story felt uh, manufactured, Stugatz. It can feel like, through everything that happened, Woj and Hurley used the Lakers' position with CAA and everyone else to conjure an offer that wasn't good enough so that Dan Hurley could get coveted with Woj on ESPN. And for all the media touring that Dan Hurley did, where did he not appear? Not on ESPN. Right. And um, my answer to the question to everybody, even though I didn't realize that that could be a situation where a coach is manipulating the media in order to um, – both curry public favor and control the narrative is, uh, no, if we were first, I still would have taken him because we were first. We were going to get him first. Uh, but I had not considered before that the possibility that we would be being used. You're used by every guest. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Used by every guest and that comes in here. We use them too. We use each other. Right. That was... That's we got the deal. something, he got something, we I'm got not, it first. Please, good. keep yeah. using us. Guess, yes. more guests use us. But I'll tell you what, I would take him fifth, I would take him last, yeah. I'll take him next been, week, I'll take him every been week. Refreshing. I been, I, nice. I it's been refreshing. I enjoyed nice. being in the news cycle with right. a newsmaker, and that's nice. I'd like more of that. Use use us all the time. Yeah. I mean, I More saw, people use us. I saw my name, I saw your name on ESPN.com, all over ESPN. It felt good. It's I, been a minute. I uh, felt good. Yeah, I may privately think that there's some big plan. That's hatched between agent and and client and media affiliates. I don't care. Then we we got aggregated. That's great. That's that means all that matters. Attention, audience acquisition. Attention is all that. No, matters. but also being able to talk to the newsmakers. You should be honored that you were selected to be used. Yes. He's yes. like, we gotta go. We want to go out and talk. So let out man, If I may, I your, whole your whole take your, your whole take on this is like an example as to why we're not being used plenty. Because you get used and you complain about being used. Yeah. Like and then you want to say, why aren't more people using me? I wasn't complaining about being used. He's I asking. was I was uh, put something was put in front of me this weekend that I had not it had not 
dawned on me. It was not something that I had considered before it happened, and it wasn't something that I considered after it happened. Only when I was asked the questions did I consider it. I'm not sure he's using us any more than Patton Oswalt did. No, Patton Oswalt <laughs> used us so Correct. good. Yeah. He used us so good. Mm -hmm. Not that guy, huh? He made it seem like he was our friend. That was worse. You and Hurley <laughs> didn't seem like he was our friend. He's just using us. Patton gave us hope. You and Patton specifically had a thing. Oh, no. I know that was fake now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Used you. Mm -hmm. He was acting? So attention is the only thing that we should crave? Uh, yep. We entertain. We, like, we entertain. You aspire to some journalism because of your roots and occasional, I think you did occasional yeah journalism. but you did do the journalism like you asked some good questions like, but like yeah what it's, it's on what you what else if, would it be if you know that's a social contract it's incumbent upon you to try to differentiate uh, differentiate yourself from the pack knowing that okay more people are going to talk about this this is clearly a a coordinated effort to lift them in a positive light because that's a great story. The guy shoes the NBA and stays in his small town with his program and he's taken to unbelievable heights. It's your job as an interviewer to make your interview stand out. Yeah. And I think it did stand out not just because of the timing on it, because it was first in the news cycle, but because of the nature uh, of the questions that you were asking. So, yeah, great great all around. Now you wish even more that you just did 15 minutes on weather with him, don't you? I remember you wanted to do that before. Or Billy Joel. I did. I did want to do that with him. The Billy I did. Joel kind of didn't get aggregated somehow. You guys talked me out of doing 15 minutes on just the flooding in Miami. Just I, w I thought it would be funny. Yes. yes. That was a helpless feeling following along in pot on the podcast in real time. Like, oh no, Dan Hurley is doing this and we're going to run bit with him. No, please no. And we, then you guys did a great interview with him. We did sell it as an exclusive. That it was not. Yeah. Well, it was. I thought well, he it was sold it first. To us, I yes, mean. I thought it was first. You were exclusively first, <laughs> and we bought it. You were exclusive in that you were first, yeah. and you 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 did see the benefits of that. Only one show could be first, Dan. I mean, can't do two at once. If you're not first, you're last. Right. Yeah. That was helpful. File. I mean, I'll go. No, you don't have to go, but at least now this is growth. You're you seeing it. it finally. You're seeing how useless you can be sometimes. Well, that was quiet, like, so I was trying to spill it. You there's know? been a lot of growth on this show, I think. <laughs> at least it's finally a mirror. Uh, finally, finally, someone other than me sees it when you are just being gratuitously useless. It's <laughs> another theme of the show. <laughs> That's a more broad sense. Uh, we call them women now. <laughs> Howdy, folks. It's Mike Ryan. It is hot. It is damp. It is summer. And it's the perfect time for grilling outside over an open flame or charcoal grill or, or propane. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I'm not really a, all that manly. I think you guys can tell. But once a year, I'll bring out that brush and I'll scrub down the grill and I'll make myself a nice meaty feast. And you can bet your bottom dollar that I'm doing so with a Miller Lite in my hand. Because Miller Lite keeps it simple. Undebatable quality. Tastes as great as your barbecue. It's a beer that strips away everything you don't need and holds on to what matters most. The light beer with the most taste. Less filling and only 96 calories. The perfect companion for grill masters all across America or people like me who grill maybe once a summer. But take a sip of that Miller Lite and realize that no matter what, it's going to be a good day. With a Miller Lite in your hand, grilling doesn't just taste great. It tastes like Miller time. To get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, visit Visit MillerLite.com slash Dan, where you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories per 12 ounces. For the ones who know safety isn't a catchphrase, it's a culture. And the ones who help make sure everyone makes it home safe. For the safety-minded who watch everyone's backs, Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry, as well as safety assessments and training to keep your facilities safe and your people safer. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done.